All right. So we are recording. Okay. So Chris, welcome back. It's great to see you again. And I've heard it's so much about your you. awesome progress and uh, just kind of have some questions prepared to kind of sure. learn, learn about how you did it and, you know, how you utilize their coaching and how it helped you get to the point where you are today. Um, you know, we're, we're 12 weeks in, you know, you've lost about 30 pounds. Exactly. Right. Think, right? Third, yeah. Right at. And so you're doing amazing, uh, you know, and I, I just kind of want to inter interview in, you and chat about your progress a little bit. Okay. So, so Chris, before finding Pursuit Fitness, what was your struggle? I kind of want to learn about before, before we started working on you, what was your struggle? Like, what were your biggest frustrations? Well, my biggest frustrations were that I was, I had, I exercised every day. I have a very physical job, so it isn't like I was sedentary. Okay. But, um, Everybody would tell me, well, you know, exercise is only part of it. You got to watch what you eat too. Well, I didn't know how to do that. I mean, I, I knew how to do it. I just didn't know what to replace my way of living with that would also work with the way I live. And so it was, it was incredibly frustrating because um, uh, the results I would get would be very inconsistent. I had, I had been at my peak uh, uh, right around 2012 of 270 pounds, okay? And I had started um, a very strict, high protein, you know, diet that just was so boring. But I managed to stick with it long enough to lose enough weight to get down to right around 225. Then since then, and that's eight years, I have hovered between 225 and 230. Sorry, um, stop it. Uh, 230 <laughs> ever since then. And, um, uh, it's been incredibly frustrating because, you know, you go up five pounds, you go down five pounds. And then if something bad happened, something, you know, traumatic, like my mother got really sick or there was a lot of stress and anxiety at work, I would go down as low as 221, 223. But boy, as soon as things got better, I'd shoot right back up to that, to that 230 range. Well, then we got this COVID uh, work at home thing. And as soon as I was at home, I gained 10 pounds, like right off the bat, the first month, I gained 10 pounds. And uh, it, had to be because of how I was eating, you know, because the exercise went up. I wasn't going to work every day. So I was, you know, working out every day, but I'm 56. I have arthritis in both knees. I've God knows how many times I've turned my ankle. I've got bad shoulders, a lower back issue. You know, I mean, I'm 56, these things happen. So it was just incredibly frustrating and depressing as far as progress went. Mm. Um, so uh, uh, I just figured I had to do something because you reach a point where you can't just keep trying, you know, because, and I know it sounds silly, you know, but uh, to quote Yoda, there is no, there is do or do not, there is no try anymore. And that's how I quit smoking. I reached a point where if I didn't succeed this time, I might as well just quit because I've already been doing this try my entire adult life and try is not working for me anymore. So I had to, it wasn't working for me once I passed a certain age before. Yeah. I could just go on a real restrictive diet, lose 10 pounds. Everything was great. And, uh, but I haven't, I'm, I hit the scale this morning at 206 and I haven't weighed 206 since before my daughter was born and she's 26 years old. Wow. So I feel much better physically, but yeah, that was what the struggle was. The struggle was the incredible frustration of, of little bits of success, but no continuing success. Sorry. <laughs> No, no worries. No. Yeah. So yeah, it seems like, you know, you had reached a point where you really couldn't do this on your own. So what was, what was different? What, what helped you get past that, that plateau that you kind of saw yourself at for such a long time? Well, I decided that I needed to figure out what my roadblocks were, you know, what was stopping me from being able to do this? Well, clearly I didn't know what, what diet I should be eating, what foods I should be eating and not be miserable all the time or starving, hungry or, or whatever. And, uh, um, and then I thought, well, okay, so I got a problem with nutrition. I have a problem with uh, being around people all day at work who are, you know, oh, we don't have time to eat lunch. Can we stop by here or stop by there? Well, I didn't have that problem anymore because we basically shut down. Um, but even though we're re kind of opening up slowly again, that problem isn't like it was. Um, and so I, and then what was my third problem? My third problem was exercise, no matter how much I was dedicated to it was hurting me because I am just not, um, you know, I was 237 pounds when I called you guys and my knees hurt and my back hurt and my shoulder, everything hurt all the time. And, uh, 
um, so I had to identify what my problems were. And then I started thinking, well, my problems are, I got three problems and I need to find somebody to help me fix them. So I started talking to people I worked with about what they do. And some of them, you know, they work out at Gold's Gym or one of them does Krav Maga. And I'm like, I'm 56. I'm not doing Israeli ground battle tactics. I mean, you know, so <laughs> that's not going to make my problem better. Um, one does Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So you see the crowd I'm working with here. So I thought, well, what I need is, and honest to God, I Googled it. Who will help me get in shape over the age of 40? Okay. And I needed it to be in St. Louis area. And uh, your uh, link came up to your to yours. Plus, there were a couple of others. But I looked at your videos and I looked at um, the testimonials from the people who work there and work out there. And I thought, well, um, clearly this could be something that would work for me. So that's when I called you guys and, and asked questions about what you could do, what you could do to help me because I know what my roadblocks were. And sometimes you don't, sometimes you just think, well, I'm doing the best I can. Why are these, why, what is stopping me? But I had to do a lot of really hard thinking and, and analyzing about what I was doing, you know, that wasn't working, you know, because it wasn't like I wasn't trying, I was. But then I realized that trying is the problem. I wasn't succeeding. The trying could go on all day, but the success was not happening, not consistently enough to make me less depressed and less, you know, uh, feel like a failure, you know, because it was a consistent, I, I mean, and I know people would say, well, you're on antidepressants. You can't lose weight when you're on antidepressants. Well, clearly that's not true. I've been on antidepressants for a year and I just lost 30 pounds. So you can do it no matter what your medication is. I take blood pressure medicine. What I don't take anymore is statins. My cholesterol before I started this program was 230. Now she had already cut it back a little bit because of side effects, but when I got it tested, Two weeks ago, it was 175. Oh my gosh. So, I didn't yeah, know that part, Chris. That's wow. documented um, proof that this program makes you healthier. Um, wow. I don't hurt. My knees don't hurt much. My right knee's still a little bit, you know, got a torn meniscus there. I think that's a gimme. Um, but I feel better, stronger. Um, I can, I have more energy when I wake up in the morning. Absolutely didn't believe that was going to happen, and it did. So, um, yeah, the, the roadblocks were the identifying thing. And that's what made me call you guys was I had to figure out somebody to help me through those roadblocks. So Chris, you, you came here, you know, you said you had, you had pain, you were af afraid of, you know, what you could do with exercise. You were trying, you know, diets that maybe work short term. What do you mm -hmm. think was the biggest difference between our, our style of coaching that has helped you succeed with this? Well, it's, it's the account of daily accountability. I think, um, uh, one of the things that's consistent with everybody I, I know who's ever undertaken a serious, uh, ch try to change their, you know, fitness is that they're accountable to somebody, a partner, a coach, a doctor, somebody, the daily accountability has been awesome. I have to weigh myself every morning. And if I, and if I don't, then I haven't done my part. And then I get a little message. Don't forget to do your, you know, just a reminder, you need to do this. And then I do it. And then that gives me a plan. And I'm, I'm big on plans. If you have a problem, a plan helps you with your stress. So, um, uh, you know, as long as I have this accountability and this daily goal I'm supposed to meet every day, that, that has helped me a lot more. It's, it's more regimented because I have somebody to account to. Gotcha. Gotcha. So the accountability and you know, the daily check-ins, your coach personally reaching out to you and making sure that you're, right. you're doing what you're supposed to be doing is, has what's led you to the success that you've had. Right. Awesome. Um, so what would you say uh, before this, like how is, how is that extra weight that you were carrying around uh, and not able to, to completely get off on your own? Like how is that struggle frustrating you in life? How is it affecting your life? Well, it, it did, sure as heck didn't help with the chronic depression and the insomnia because you, you start thinking less of yourself. And I don't, you know, for me, it isn't, a, it isn't about how I look per se, you know, I mean, kind of, but not really. It's more about this. Um, my mother died last summer. She was 80. She uh, had stage four lung cancer. Now we didn't find out she had it until she was, you know, very sick. Uh, because she was always such a healthy person that when she started feeling bad or gradually, she just chopped up being 80. But 20 years before that, almost 20 years before that, my mom had been a huge woman. She was just always my whole life, a very large woman. 
and she had had a heart attack, not a big one, but a little one. And the doctor said, where your blockages are, we can't do anything about that because if we try, you're going to have a massive heart attack. And they said, so you have to do something about this or you're going to be dead in a few years. You are you know, way unhealthy. You, you drink too much. You eat the wrong foods. You have to fix it. Well, it scared her. So she went on this you know, very restrictive diet, started walking every day, lost 125 pounds and kept it off for the rest of her life. So when my mom got sick 20 years later and they said, what health conditions do you have? She's like, well, I had a mild heart attack almost 20 years ago. Well, that was it. That was, she had no other health issues because of the exercise and stuff. And so I got to thinking about that after she died. And I thought, you know what? You have to be, we have an, you have to be fit to fight. If you are a soldier or a cop or anybody like that, you can't run to the fight and then be winded and out of breath when you get there, or you're not fit to fight. And that should apply to everything in, in my life is what I was thinking. So after she died, I thought, you know what, why am I waiting until some doctor points at me and says, look, you know, mm -hmm. if you want to be fit to fight 20 years from now, you have to fix it now. And so I was very depressed about the fact that I wasn't getting fit to fight no matter how much I was trying. And it was very frustrating. Plus, functionally, I could not bend over to tie my shoes without getting winded. I looked like a barrel on sticks in my uniform at work. I just felt clumsy and awkward and bulky and, you know, just... I just, everything was less comfortable, you know, yeah. physically, and I needed that to go away. So. Gotcha. So right now, like, what would you say, like, so far? I know it's been a short journey and you've made some amazing progress in, in the last few months here. What's the, what's been the biggest impact so far for you, would you say? Um, you'd be besides the doctor's tests and stuff. Well, yeah, um, they collect all yeah. the numbers going down. That's amazing. Well, uh, there's been some real funny things like, um, my shoes are looser. Um, I, uh, I had to, I had to buy new uniforms at work and now they're too big again. Um, and I don't get new uniform money till November. So that's going to be interesting. Um, I, uh, I went, you can't try clothes on at the store because of the pandemic. So I went and I just bought, I was wearing size 18 to 20 pants and I bought 14s and brought them home and they fit perfect. So wow. I was what? really shocked by that. Yeah. I bought 14s. They fit perfect. So oh probably be in 12s the next time I go. And I'm telling you, I haven't been a, I was a size 14 my senior year in high school. Holy cow. I, I, yeah. So in we're your, talking, you know, it's, yeah. That's like and, 30, no, more than that. I graduated in 81, if you're wow. counting. Yeah, I'm probably, yeah, probably before you were born, I bet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so 40 years. Um, oh, my gosh. So, yeah, and so that was weird. And then there's been other things like uh, the way the seat belt fits me in the car is different, you know. I mean, just, just weird things like that. I can sit in my desk chair at work without my tool belt hitting the handles. I had to shorten my tool belt by six inches because I haven't worn it since before the I wear a belt that's got like flashlight and a multi-tool and a you know gloves and the whole thing and uh I I put it on and it almost fell off I had to shorten it almost almost seven inches to wear it so wow. weird stuff like that yeah that you sneaks up on you and you think yay you know yeah yeah like yeah. Th things that are just you go through everyday life not even noticing these things at all until right. they're different and then you're like, oh my gosh, I've never even noticed. Like, wow, my seatbelt's fitting differently. My shoes are fitting. Like, my yeah, I know the shoe right thing blew my mind. I was wow. like, why are my shoes so loose? And it's like, I guess you lose weight everywhere. You do. So, and swelling yeah. goes down when you, you know, the inflammation is down and swelling goes down. And yeah, and that's, that's another thing. I, I used to have a lot of problems with bloat, abdominal bloat. And that's all, that was gone right away. I mean, within the first two weeks, I noticed that was completely gone just the first two weeks of eating less processed food, less fried, you know, no fried foods. I eat nothing fried. I, I really didn't much before, but boy, you know, once you completely cut stuff like that out, certainly processed foods. Um, I quit drinking. Uh, sometimes I have a glass of wine once in a while, but I'm not like I was. I drank wine every night before bed. I don't do that anymore because my, my sister goes, your body is lazy. It will burn the alcohol before it burns the fat. I'm going, okay, you got me. I'll quit. And that helped a lot. So I don't have any of that bloat or water retention or anything like that that I used to have. That's all better. And, and you mentioned earlier that this is a more sustainable way of, of, of losing weight and getting healthy. Right. Um, 
how is it sustainable? Tell, you know, tell people out there how this is something that anybody can do. Well, I, I have a pretty addictive personality. Um, not, not anything serious, but food. Sure. I smoked for 20 years and I'm a two pack a day or zero cigarettes kind of person. So once I internalized that in my head, I realized it had to be zero because it sure couldn't keep being two, you know, um, same thing with drinking wine, drank it every single day. And then I just decided, well, I can't do this anymore. And I realized that doesn't work for most people. Most people that struggles a lot harder. Um, but the reason people can do it is because it really is about getting your head in the right place. If your head is not in the right place, confidence wise, uh, and the confidence I get a lot of that from you guys, at least 90% of the confidence I get from you guys. And, and here's something that's important. I bought a scale and everybody should do this because the scale does the weight, the pounds do not tell the whole story. You buy a scale that measures your body fat percent and your BMI. And no matter what the pounds are, watch those two numbers. Because even if your pounds go up half a pound and you look at your lean mass and it's up and your body fat is down, then that's success. So you right. have to find those successes in the, you can't just say, oh my gosh, I'm half a pound up today. I'm a failure because right. you're not. If you right. look at your BMI, if you look at your body fat percent, those things tell the real story. The inches tell the real story. And right. so those tools that you guys, you know, gave me to, with accountability where I can see those numbers and graph how they change. Um, that's really been helpful. And that's why anybody can do it. They just have to use, anybody can do it because once you, I was in terrible, I was strong, but I was easy to tie, tired easy. You know, I, I was bulky. I didn't fit in places I needed to fit. And uh, I just felt like I was never getting better, just getting worse. And no matter how much I tried, I wasn't getting better. So in, if I'm in that condition, anybody else should be able to, even just small successes will help, you know, feed, feed you. Awesome. So, so Chris, I'm actually going to take a minute because, um, that's a really important thing to know that, you know, progress, there's ups and downs with progress. And mm -hmm. one of the things we do is we track progress regularly. And so I'm just going to share my screen real quick here to show, to have you talk about this a little bit, because, because okay. this is your, this is your progress. Yeah. So this is, uh, this is three months of progress. Right. But if we were to look at, at snapshots, and you can see that trend is is down the whole time. Yeah, the right. trend is down, but there's little places where. Right. So if we, yeah. but if we look at this, this is a one, this is in August, right? Right. So there's ups and downs there. Yes. Right. And then in July, there's ups and downs. Yes. A lot of times people give up when they see the uptrend and they don't mm -hmm. give it time enough to go back down, right? Right, because a lot of things can cause that, and you have to just keep telling yourself that. It's the long-term progress that mm -hmm. the, is what matters. So there's going to be bumps in the road. There's going to be times where your body doesn't do what you want it to do. But, you know, overall, if you stick with it, it'll happen, right? Yes. And, and an important thing to note, on my daughter's birthday, she said, oh, let's have, you know, El Magwe and wine. And I'm like, oh, my God. You know, first of all, and then carrot cake. Who doesn't three, love of my, food, no. three of my favorite things, right? Yeah. So that cost me three. The next day I got on the scale, I was three pounds heavier. Now, did I eat enough calories to gain three pounds? Oh, heck no. There's nope. no way I did. So right. all the sodium and the bulk, you know, that is what did that. But within the next couple of days, it went away. And right. so when you see the big spike around July 14th or 15th, that, and my birthday's coming up on September and, you know, I'm not, you know, like, okay, Saturday, my, we were out and my daughter said, let's get some sushi. But let's go easy on the fried foods. I said, well, I can't eat anything fried. I don't want to. It'll just make me feel bad. And she said, okay, so we got a two, four rolls and split them and uh, had water with it or whatever. And the next day I was half a pound lighter. Go figure. But that's a lot of sodium. So I drank a lot of water that day because I, I was so thirsty from having sushi. And uh, yeah, I was half a pound lighter the next day. So you don't know what's going to affect yeah. it. Yeah. It could be little things. It's, it's sometimes unpredictable what's going to happen in the short mm -hmm. term. But yeah, if, but if you look at my body fat percent and you look at that, that'll tell you a story and so will the lean mass. There was one weird thing in there where I think the scale malfunctioned where there's a giant spike or, yeah, yeah. so I think ignore that because I think that was just a glitch in the scale because I saw, at the time I saw that went, no, that can't be right. But I was in a hurry, so. In the end, you know, we talk about the 80-20 rule. 80% 80, 80 of the time we're doing, you know, the, we're eating what we want to eat. We're eating, or we're eating the healthy foods that we want you to eat, right? 20% right. of the time we're going off the plan is that that's doable, right? 
Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I try, I try to, uh, I try not to binge as it were, because I always feel, I don't feel guilty per se, but I always feel bad afterwards. And I think it has to do with the quality of the food. Um, one of the things I noticed is that I can't eat a big meal anymore. And believe me, I could put away the food before, you know, I could go to IHOP and get the big, you know, uh, spinach mushroom omelet, eat the whole thing with two pieces of toast. And I'm, you know, I was like, wow, that was good. Are we going to have dessert? You know, I cannot eat like that anymore. I just can't. Uh, my body's adjusted to a whole lot less food. Um, I think it's important for me to mention, and I didn't mention this earlier, that the best thing you guys gave me was a roadmap. You know, you gave me a, a, a guide to follow. Uh, you know, do this, do that, do this on this day, do that on that day. And when I said things like, hey, I can't side plank, guys. I'm going to tip over if I do that. I have no balance. I have more now, you know, but uh, when I say things like, oh, that bear crawl, I can't do that. That kills my knees. And so she modified that stuff. You know, okay, don't do this, then do that. Or, and then even then I can modify some of it, you know, for length of time and, and amount of stress if I feel like it's hurting me in places. But I've noticed that's less and less. And um, that's uh, a good thing to mention. A lot of people have pre-existing injuries and, you know, we specialize in working with an older, older population, you know, people that are 40 and older and not in their 20s. And this has been doable for you, right? What we've right. given you is doable, right? Yeah, it, it has been. And uh, it's, you know, we, we go easy at first. It wasn't, it wasn't too hard at first. And, you know, at first, everybody's super committed, you know. And then you hit that three-week mark and you're going, well, and it's the same thing like with the quitting smoking. I hit the three-week mark and I'm going, I feel better, but boy, it's sure like a cigarette, you know. But, you know, sometimes you just have to go find something else to do and get your mind off of it, you know. Um, there are little tricks people can use, I mean, to get themselves motivated. And I think that, you know, blaming, I used to blame a lot of stuff on, well, I come from a long line of burly German women, you know, stuff like that. And yes, I do. But, um, you know, uh, they were burly because they were all muscle. You know, I mean, if you're push, dragging a plow horse, you're, of course, you're, you know, but I was not like that. Uh, I was just using that as an excuse to excuse the fact that I was basically a barrel on sticks. And so if you're carrying all that weight above your hips, like I did, you know, that's really unhealthy. And I knew that, and I knew I had to do something because 60 is on the horizon there. And I have to be, you know, not to be over dramatic, in shape for the wars to come, you know? And one of the guys that works at what wars? And I go, you know, death and disease. <laughs> I mean, you're not gonna beat death, but you can at least come in, you know, go in the ring with your fists up, you know? Uh, you're going to lose, but so what? You at least gave it your all. You didn't go into it already tired from the fighting all along the way up there, you know? And I, I just didn't want to be that way. I wanted to be healthier when it came time for me to need to be healthier. So. Man, well said. <laughs> that, is, that is awesome. I, I gave this a lot of thought. I think that, you know, I was really excited when I got my labs back and I saw the success I had there. And, you know, if, if somebody needs a concrete reason to do it, I'm taking less medication now. I feel better. I sleep better, way better. Um, uh, I sometimes have to cook two different dinners. You know, actually almost every night I cook at least two dinners. I live with my husband and my son. Uh, my husband's disabled, severe arthritis. Um, he's, a, he's a large man. Um, he's not very comfortable, but the damage to his joints is extensive now. My son is uh, on the spectrum. He does not work. He's going to school, um, but he has, because he's you know, on a spectrum, it's very specific dietary, you know, rules. So very often I make three dinners. That's just, I just do. And that's just, you know, you just have to say, well, that's what I have to do. And that's what I have to do. And that work, it's working out. You know, sometimes I feel like a chef, but whatever. <laughs> hey, you know? if all of, if you overcome all of those potential things that could make you say, you know what, this is too hard for me, then any, anybody can do this, right? I, I think so. I, you know, I, I know, I know that it's harder when you have little kids and there's, I mean, obviously, cause I couldn't do it when I had little kids, when I had little kids running around here with before school and after school and sports and, you know, orchestra and mock trial and blah, blah, blah. I mean, it was just always something. It was, it, you just had no choice. You had to eat fast and run. I would never presume to judge somebody else's life at any other time. I, mean, I don't, don't do, judge anybody else's life, but I was looking at mine and I knew I had to make changes and if I can do it, probably other people can too. I, I don't think of myself as extraordinarily special in that way. I'm not, I mean, I'm hard headed, but that can hurt you too, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Well, Chris, last question I have for you is, mm -hmm. is, you know, we're, 
we're three months in, you made amazing progress. What is, what are your goals for the future? Where do you want to get to? Like, what is your vision? Well, I, I look pretty good at 180 or less. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to lose my mind here and, and not have my muscle mass be high enough to support my joint structure. I don't want my, as far as I can tell, my arthritis is bothering me way less. I'd like that to continue. So ultimately my, my goals are to be able to, when they, when we have to do uh, training at work to be able to keep up with everybody else. Uh, I am right now the second oldest uh, person that wears a uniform where I'm at. And uh, I, the person who's older than me just ran a half marathon. So clearly I'm not, you know, so uh, uh, it, it'd be great if I could point to him and go, yeah, see old people, but yeah, you know, that's not going to happen. So uh, I'd like to see myself be able to keep up better. I'd like to see myself be able to, you know, do things like my daughter and I are going to go rock climbing. We're going to go, she goes to upper limits. We're going to go rock climbing as soon as that opens up more. Uh, Cause she says, Oh, you'll love it. And I'm going, yeah, I could probably do it now too. You know? How cool is that? I mean, would you ever think you would have gone rock climbing, you know? No, <laughs> no, we went, we went to Red Rocks in Colorado to see Jason Mraz. That was her graduation present from grad school. And uh, we're walking all the way up to where the seats are. And I stopped because I have asthma. I mean, just, you know, if people are wondering, you can do this with asthma too. Um, I have asthma and I get about halfway up and I go, boy, I don't know. I think Jason really should appreciate the fact that this is going to kill me. And she goes, if you die here, I'm going to go watch that concert anyway. And I go, fair enough. <laughs> you know, so... <laughs> But yeah, I just want to be able to be, have more fun in my life. I really do. That's so, what it's all about. That's what life right. is about. It's about fun. Well, thank you, Chris, so much. You're very welcome. You're, you're an inspiration and uh, look forward to hearing about more and more of your progress. Okay. Well, if you have any anything else you want to talk about, just let me know and I'll do what I can do. Okay. Because right, you guys perfect. have been amazingly helpful and I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. It's, it's like being out of prison. It really is. You're a pleasure you know. to finish, though. So well, I appreciate you. that. Thank you for Michelle so sends me little puns, and you know I can't let that go unchallenged. You know, <laughs> right? <laughs> right. All right, Chris. I'll All talk right. to you later. You have a great day. Okay. Thank Thanks. you so you much. Too. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye.